Just got back from another leg of touring with Chris Bodie. Next week, I'm headed to San Francisco for another one of my residencies out at the San Francisco Conservatory. And then right after that, we're doing three nights with my quartet at Birdland. So we'd love to see you guys there. The last few times we've played Birdland, it has sold out. So just make sure to get tickets ahead of the show if you want to come through. And if you haven't already, make sure to click subscribe on the channel here. And also hit that bell button so you get notifications when we do a new release. That way you can always be up to date on posts from live shows that we're doing. And then you can get notified anytime we're releasing free content on this channel. We're always trying to get new information out for you so we can help you with your improvisational studies. But today I thought it would be really cool to talk about one of my favorite soloing techniques or harmonic devices or improvisation concepts, however you want to label it. This is one of my favorite devices for creating really cool sounding lines. And that device is called triad pairs or hexatonics. They're pretty much the same thing. So first, let's talk about what that means. A triad pair is simply a pair of triads that do not share a common note. So you could just take any two triads, any quality you'd like, and if you put those two triads together and you see that they don't have any notes in common, that makes it a triad pair. Now, if you were to take all the notes from those two triads and stack them up sequentially, so they go ascending and descending in order, then you will have just constructed a six note scale, which could also be labeled as a hexatonic. So that's why triad pairs and hexatonics are essentially the same thing, because pretty much any hexatonic scale you create could be actually broken down into two triads. So there are two things that we're going to consider today. One is going to be how to put together some triad pairs in order to match with certain harmony. And the other thing that we're going to check out today is going to be exercises so you can actually get fluid with these sounds and this technique. And so you can start weaving it into your improvisation. Now, this is an advanced concept, but what I always tell people is it's always very important to not overwhelm yourself and think that you can't be working on an advanced concept, even if you're a more developing player. The example that I always give is that when I was 10 years old, that's when I started working on my very first Charlie Parker solo. And all I did was one measure at a time, very slow. But it's very important to be challenging yourself to be always working on advanced material, as that is truly what's gonna make you grow the fastest as a musician. So with that in mind, let's check out this first triad pair or hexatonic exercise. And we're gonna use probably the most straightforward triad pairing, which is going to be playing two major triads a whole step apart. There are gonna be a few other different triad pairs that we're gonna get into today. And all the triad pairs and all the hexatonic devices that we use today and everything that we check out is gonna be from a new release that we just released on Jazz Lesson Videos. This one's called 16 Exercises on Triad Pairs and Hexatonics for Jazz Musicians. And this PDF download is gonna have all these exercises and all these triadic pair devices written for you in all 12 keys, ascending and descending. So you can have that sheet music as a resource if you wanna get really fluent with this stuff. Now for this first triad pairing that we're gonna check out today, we're gonna to check out two triads that are gonna be a whole step apart. They're both gonna be major triads. This is probably the most straightforward way of playing a triad pair. Now there are gonna be a bunch of different places that you can play this triad pair that it's gonna fit inside harmonically, but probably the two most straightforward places if you're going to use F and E flat, for example, you could put that on an F7 or a C minor chord. A lot of times we actually play the upper triad first because then it relates to the tonic of the chord that we're playing. So a lot of times we would actually play the F major triad before the E flat major triad. And that's how a lot of these exercises are gonna work, you'll see in a second. But for now, let's just play the E flat major triad and then the F major triad so you can hear them ascending. And so you can hear what it sounds like on this F7 chord. 
And now we'll hear that again, but we're actually going to apply it to a C minor 7 chord. So next we want to get more fluid with the sound. So the best way to do that is to practice it in cool, creative ways that mix up the shapes and directions of these triads throughout your range. So here's an example of an exercise from this PDF download where we actually crisscross the triads. So we have really smooth connections between the triads throughout. So what we do here is we play up an F major triad. Then we play down an E flat major triad. Then from there, we play up the F major triad again, but we do it from the third of that F major triad. The third is essentially the second note of that F major triad. So this triad ends up being an F major triad, but in first inversion. Then we play down an E flat major triad, and this will actually be in second inversion. This isn't super important, but the inversion of a triad essentially goes based off of what the bottom note is. So we see the bottom note here is the fifth, which is the third note of the E flat major triad. The greater, more important point being that throughout this exercise, you see that we're just voice leading smoothly from triad to triad by crisscrossing up and down and connecting to the closest note above where we're finishing the last triad in order to get into the next triad. So let's see what this one sounds like. And descending will sound like this. So with this exercise, we end up using triplets. Triad pairs are a really nice opportunity to practice incorporating triplets into your improvising. But you can also use triad pairs in eighth note lines. There are a bunch of different ways that you can do that, but probably the most straightforward way is what we'll do next. And here, what we're gonna do is we're always going to repeat one note in the triad. So if you check out this next exercise, we're gonna start on a low concert A, and this is gonna be a nice opportunity to play an exercise throughout the full range of your instrument. So we're gonna see we start on a low A, then we play C and F and then A again on top. So what's going on here is that we've got a first inversion F major triad and we're repeating that first note on the top in order to fit it into eighth notes. That way we're gonna be getting four notes from each triad. Now we can actually do all sorts of things with different triad pairings, which we'll check out in a second, and also a different amount of groupings, which will make it really rhythmically interesting. And we'll check that out in a second as well. But for now, this is a really straightforward way to get flexible with triad pairs. And of course, you're definitely gonna to wanna to take this through the keys and eventually memorize this stuff through the keys. For memorization, I always recommend looking at the page for the first measure, then looking away from it, trying to memorize that by going back and forth. Then eventually when you're ready, go on to that second measure and memorize that second measure before you then tie the first and second measure together. So you'll memorize measure one, then you'll memorize measure two, then you'll tie together measure one and two, memorizing both of those together. And that's gonna be a really helpful process as you're trying to get this stuff memorized through different keys as well. So again, we're using four notes on each triad just by repeating one note in every triad. And we're still doing that same idea with crisscrossing here and voice leading from one triad to the next. This exercise is gonna sound like this. And then the descending version of that crisscross exercise would sound like this. So for this next exercise, we're gonna use that triad pairing of the two major triads a half step apart. But you're gonna see here, we're gonna mix up the shape. So within the triad, we're not just gonna be going up or down. We're gonna start going up by jumping past the third from the root and jumping up to the fifth. Then we're gonna go back down to the root via the third. So we'll skip up the triad to start and then we're gonna step down the triad back to the root. We'll then do that next shape from the root of F sharp major. And we'll continue that pattern up through each triad pair by utilizing the inversion. So that just means that when we start this next measure, we're gonna use that F major triad again, but we're gonna start on the third, jump up to the root, and then step back down to the third, and so on and so forth throughout the exercise. So let's check out what this one sounds like. And descending will sound like this. All right, so for this next exercise, we're gonna get really hip with this. We're gonna have two triads that are a tritone apart. And we're also gonna mix up the grouping of the notes within each triad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have four notes from the first triad and three notes from the second triad. 
That's going to essentially create this vibe where we've got a grouping of seven rhythmically throughout the exercise. So if you check this out, we start with an F major triad where we start with an A on the bottom. Then we play A, C, F, A. So it ends up just being an F major triad in first inversion, playing that third both on the bottom and the top. So we have four notes from the F major triad. Then after that, we just have three notes from the B major triad. So again, we're using two triads, a tritone apart. So we're using F and B, but we're only gonna take three notes from this B major triad. Then from there, we're gonna go right into the F major triad again, but we're gonna be starting on the fifth instead of the third because we're gonna be moving sequentially up each triad. We're also gonna start on the and of four instead of beat one. Because remember, we just played a grouping of four followed by a grouping of three. So we've got a grouping of seven when putting these two triads together. That means we're not gonna finish the whole bar and we're gonna start this next pattern from the and of four. It's gonna create a really interesting rhythmic effect, which you're gonna hear in just one second. So from this and of four, again, we're gonna play an F major triad. And this is gonna be from second inversion starting on the fifth. So you'll see the notes are gonna be C, F, A, and C. Then right after that, we're gonna play the B major triad. Again, we're gonna be going down from the root. It's secondly going to be first inversion because the lowest note is gonna be D sharp. So it's gonna be the third. But the more important thing here is we're just gonna see again, three notes from the B major triad. So then we start the next F major triad on beat four. And so we continue this pattern throughout. So we're just taking four notes from F major, repeating one of the notes in the triad every time. And we're taking three notes from B major. This essentially creates this four, then three grouping, or a full grouping of seven. Now, a really great way to practice these triad pairs, especially when we have an interesting grouping like this, is going to be playing it with a backing track where the harmony lines up. So with this exercise, you could do it on an F7 or a B7. Either way, we're gonna have this friction created when we go back and forth between the tritones. Another option where it could create a really cool effect is on C minor. So that's what we're gonna do here. And remember, we've got all this information for you written out through all the keys in this PDF download if you wanna check that out as a resource. All right, so now we're gonna get a little bit more straightforward again. And with both of these exercises, we're gonna get a little bit more scale-based in the nature of how we're using these triad pairs. So remember how in the beginning I mentioned that you can put triad pairs together in a way consecutively, so it ends up being a six note scale. Well, now we're gonna check out two exercises that actually are structured more in a scale-like way. So if you want, you could think of this approach as being more hexatonic in nature. So instead of playing a block of a triad and a block of another triad, we're just gonna put these notes together and structure a scale-based exercise off of it. So in this exercise, we're gonna do a repeated pattern where we step up two scale degrees and then we skip a scale degree from there. So first, let's just look at how this hexatonic ends up being structured by putting together these two triad pairs, F minor and E flat major. So if we put together the notes of these two triads sequentially, we're gonna end up getting F, G, A flat, B flat, C, E flat, and F again on top. So this scale is gonna work great on an F minor chord, or if you start on E flat, it's also an example of a really great sounding scale that can work on an E flat major chord. Hexatonics quite literally create a really cool middle ground between a pentatonic and a full diatonic seven note scale. To my ears, a pentatonic scale sounds very edgy by nature of only having five notes whereas a full seven note diatonic scale ends up sounding a little bit more extended and colorful. These six note hexatonic scales kind of find a nice middle ground between the two. So now let's take this six note hexatonic scale and let's actually put it into a scale based exercise. So again, we're not gonna be taking blocks of triads here where we play one triad at a time and you know sort of stack it up each triad sequentially. We're actually gonna be putting this into a scale and treating it as a scale exercise. So the best thing that you can do with scales is you can take different shapes with those scales and build different exercises off of those shapes so you can get really flexible soloing within those scales. In this exercise here, we're gonna see a great example of a step-step skip pattern. So we're gonna start with two steps, stepping from the first through the third notes of the scale. Then we're gonna skip over one note in the scale up to the fifth degree. And then we're gonna step all the way back down. Then we're gonna continue that pattern up from each degree of the scale. So that's gonna end up sounding like this. Then 
when we do that pattern descending, it's gonna sound like this. Now for this last exercise, what we're gonna consider here is just like we can play these triad pairs when we play these blocks of triads in triplets and it can sound really effective, we can also do that same idea when we're stacking the scale in a hexatonic way. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that last eighth note shape and we're actually going to adjust it a little bit so we can apply it to triplets. So looking at this exercise, we're gonna see a really similar idea to what we had before where we have that step, step, skip. But then when we step down, we're gonna take one note out of it and we're just going to, instead of going back down to that original note, we're gonna start the next pattern from that next degree. Again, chopping out a couple notes here. So let's check out what this exercise sounds like. <laughs> And descending, we'll turn that shape around. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, if you want a resource to download on this sort of thing, that PDF download that I mentioned before is gonna be a really great resource for getting into triad pairs and hexatonics, understanding where they apply harmonically, how you can use them, and getting really fluid with these sounds through these great exercises. Again, it's all written out through the keys, ascending and descending, so it's gonna be a great resource for you to check out. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more content like this. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you want us to get to next in terms of topics. And make sure to click like on this video if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.